Committee of Governance meeting to order. First item on the agenda, elect the chair. And does the chair then take over the running They take the over the meeting. Oh, okay. Do we have to, we could just. Nominate from the floor. I nominate. Do we need a second? That's all you need. All right. Second. All right. Okay. Then he has to accept it. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. Okay. So Meet Paul's yours. the chair. Go for okay. it. Okay. Uh, so the second thing that's on the agenda was just the meeting schedule. Um, I think in years past we've just always done the first Tuesday of the month, if that works, so that we can get through everything. Um, we have had times when we cancel or change. I mean, you can't make it. Obviously, we have alternates, but uh, if that works, and can you'll have to confirm there's no conflicts on there, maybe. We can definitely do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the only it's the second of January. Yeah, there'll be a couple like that that'll okay. show up where it's you know yeah. district closed kind of thing. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. But other than that, I that's yep. fine with me. And then we don't have them if yeah. the di if district yeah. stuff right. spring break and that kind of. Okay. okay. We're like, yep. And then, I mean, we could sometimes we sometimes we gotta get sometimes we jump to the third or uh, Tuesday if that's the case. Okay. So. We can uh, put a schedule together, and I apologize. I just realized I didn't put out the grid. I was supposed to add that to the agenda. The so there's a there's a schedule grid. I'll I'll uh, attach it to the uh, meeting schedule so that you can see it. But we put together uh, oh, was it four or five years ago now? So that everything's on the rotation. Because I know we looked at it, but I don't. Wow. You did, but I think it was supposed to be posted on here, and it's not. So I'm going to add that. That's what I find that it. we should cover this, yeah. this cycle. This cycle. Yeah, okay. and we did that so that everything gets reviewed every three years. Yeah, I remember seeing something like that, but the first Tuesday is fine with us. And by the way, we did that because that's part of the IASB best practices is to review your policies every three years. I'm sure that was initially their best practice because board terms were three years. Mm -hmm. They never changed it after that, so you okay. can just follow that. Okay. All right. So, which is sometimes what leads us to have to have a meeting because we got to get through some of that stuff. Yeah. So. Uh, all right. So. I don't know how we're going to proceed with the next one since I'm the only one that was there for the minutes. Uh, you can make the motion and someone can second it, okay. which is what I think we've done in the past mm -hmm. with that. Uh, well, I <coughs> move that the minutes be approved. Second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. And then we move on to the ends policy. So that we did reading and writing, I believe, last year. So now we're on to math, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but when we did these um, last time, I think that, and, and I asked, uh, I think we changed. We did them two. all. Yeah. yeah, we went through, and, and um, because of the change in No Child Left Behind to ESSA, um, we went through and changed them all, so yeah. we're ahead um, on that one, so we've already uh, gone through and made those changes. So. We did the entire set of ends policies all at once because we didn't want to have some that were compliant with the SSA and some that still had no child left behind language in them. So we just did them all mm -hmm. uh, last year. Yeah, because this date, the revised date on all of them says April yep. 2017. Mm -hmm. so. so when we say on average, <coughs> mean, median, mo, like what is our average? I'm pretty sure they're using mean on that okay. one. Yeah. So, uh, you guys have any changes that you need to like see in math and science? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. Well, we need to take those two back to the board then to be approved. They've already been approved, so yeah, it no literally was just an opportunity to take a look at them and stay on schedule, if you will. and. Uh, make sure that there weren't any additional changes that uh, you wanted to see, and if not, then actually that's one you can check off because it's been approved by the board. Okay. So right now we're just looking at math and science. Math and science. Tonight. Yep. <coughs> you know, is there any way we can, um, uh, not not a way.
we can. But to start talk about growth in year over year and yep. kind of make that a so one of the things that we have now in both the uh, ESSA provides a provision for growth if your state adopts a plan that includes growth. Okay. So Iowa's proposed plan of the state included growth, so that's now something that's part of the state option. Okay. And so then they're de going to develop growth metrics. Okay. Um, do you know how far out they are on that? Uh, the last time I heard, they were figuring they're probably six months out. Okay. Um, and part of it was. The assessment, which is now under legal challenge, right. so they're waiting to get that resolved, I think, before they do anything with it. Okay. So then they'll actually give us uh, some growth metrics so that we've got something to, to um, look across districts with. Great. Any other questions on there? Yeah. All right, so Appendix 7, new school name. We added this uh, to this meeting, um, something that needs to be reviewed because we're going through that process now and it's already <coughs> out. Um, if you take a look at it, um, <coughs> Steve, maybe you can help me out, but I know some of the stuff is, it refers to the advocacy, advocacy and engagement committee, uh, which we don't have anymore. Correct. Um, so we actually just went through this process <coughs> and so what we did was we looked at what the appendix said mm -hmm. currently and then we actually looked back because we can keep track of changes that we've made in the past and so we reverted back to when there wasn't an advocacy engagement committee and then followed that process to bring the proposed name change forward for the shifting of the Christine Grant name from the Scanlon Farm School to the new school up across from South, South Slope. So that was the, because we went, we pulled the appendix up and said, well, that's not going to work because we don't have those pieces in place. But then, we, like I said, we were able to recover, go back to the previous methodology, and we just followed that right straight through. So um, what you have in front of you with appendix seven obviously is going to require some changes because that committee no longer exists. And then if you look at the other one that says prior to, uh, so that's the old uh, Appendix 6, mm -hmm. um, and that would be the process that we followed this time around. So um, it's not that we just have to take the old one and put it in, in place of the new one. It's probably taking a look at both of them and figuring out how you want to fold that together. We can certainly take a stab at that if you'd like us to. We just didn't take the liberty to do that before we came in and had the conversation. Who was, uh, who, what was the advocacy engage, or who was on the advocacy engagement committee? Um, it was... <coughs> it was Chris or uh, Brian. Yeah. I'm trying to think the last time it met. Yeah. Uh, it's been it's a while. Then they combined that work with the governance. Governance had been governance. a standalone committee, mm -hmm. and they took those two and combined them together because uh, they were meeting sporadically, and their thought was let's increase the workload and increase the regularity of the meetings so that there's more of a flow to it. And it did, so the advocacy, advocacy engagement did like all the, the um, legislative priorities and then brought those back to the board and a lot of those things were things that the board at the time said we'd rather do that as a group of a whole okay and so and what happened then was the advocacy engagement committee went from having a whole lot of stuff to do to almost nothing to do mm -hmm. and that was when they said hey let's just fold the last few things that we have into policy and governance and so it was just a board committee yep so then the there wasn't committee. all this <coughs> list of people no no was, this would have been a committee like this yep. right. it was Brian yep Okay. Yeah, this list of people is just the the list that uh, you're talking about, number three on there. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah, that was that's just the list that we use on the naming committee. Okay, so the naming, yeah. and that's so just an ad hoc committee that's just for the purpose of naming the school, right. and that's it. But now under this policy, that under that's the, not there. Just receive name suggestions from the community could be. Yeah. People send in emails. And yep. Okay. Yeah. So they they had looked at it and said rather than using that kind of process, let's just put a solicitation out, send them in, ask the admin team to sift and winnow those, and then bring them back to the committee. So we didn't want to take the liberty of doing one and two and then just bringing that to the board without having a committee to to vet those. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why we reverted to the old process. So the changes then we would have, you know, we could stick with one and two. Uh, number three, we would have to take out three and four. Yeah. So you either refer to a different committee or you could take <coughs> so some parts of the old one. I mean, them. to me, that 
you know, that committee, that type of a committee makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. you're going to get um, a lot of diverse perspectives and some some conversation around. Yep. And that's exactly what we got this time around. And so. is that how, so this old one is how Christine Grant got named? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I think so there was one group like, that did uh, all of the names at the time, right? So it would have been Grant, Hoover, uh, Liberty. Liberty. Yep. Oh, they did them all. Mm -hmm. They did yep. them all. And okay. they came back to the meeting and said, here's the ones that here's what we... Here's our top choice yeah, for each one. Yeah, the board approved. Yeah. They brought, uh, the, um, we had administrative reps on the team, and so they came back and said, here's the top choice for each school. And we looked at it and said, looks good to us. And then we forwarded their recommendation directly to the board for action. So we can still have, what about, um, since it was a board committee that narrowed down the suggestions, what are your thoughts on it being the operations committee? Well, that's fine. And the change that was made in 16 was to have the administrative team do that. Oh, okay. Right, but we're, I'm talking about the, because three and four no longer right. exist. So in place of three and four, that's what I was referring to. I mean, I guess I'd like to see more involvement than just, you know, the board. I mean, I, I, mean, I kind of like having parents and teachers and involved in that process. But that's what we have in one. The community. Well, yeah, but that's anybody can send an email. I mean, so when you sit down and you have a list of 10 names, mm -hmm. that that conversation involves more people than just board members. Because I, you know, to get that kind of input, and then now is that board member going to be reading 60 emails about why it should be named? Or 60 bios. <laughs> 60 bios, whereas if you have a bigger group, they can be like, let me tell you who Christine Grant mm -hmm. is. Let me explain why this would be a good, and get a little bit of that, you know, community knowledge and and, uh, and the one thing that you don't have if you look at the uh, uh, process prior to that if you look at number four on there uh, there was some level of um, screener if you will so is it a famous person is it somebody who was an Iowa City a well-known Iowa City resident is it um, someone who did something important for education and and that can be a, a good filter mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know why, you know, name at the Charlie Brown School, why, what connection does that have to us here type of thing? And I would, the only thing I would add is, um, I, we could just say ICCSD, something to be a little more inclusive for our sure. Coralville and North Liberty and the yep. and University Heights. Yeah. Rural Johnson. Right, so, we just want to make sure you have changes we have that we want to make. <laughs> yeah. That's how that's kind of rules. Well, I mean, and I'm not saying, I mean, so for m that's my opinion, right, is to have no. this, I would it's go back to this thing. two, yeah. or three. Do some hybrid of these two, right? And a hybrid, I mean, if we want to have, like, instead of one school board member, do we want to have a whole school board committee, three? We don't, I don't know if that's needed. So, no, I'm good with that. With just going back to that? Is it, um, with the exception of, I mean, I don't know it why it needs to go to six. What was the purpose of it going to the <coughs> board president and then the board still had to approve it? And actually that was one of the concerns that came up at the time okay. that we were going through it is that the board president didn't want to be a filter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was one of the things that spurred us to dig around in there and make some changes to it. So. Well, that could be admin, maybe. Yeah. Instead of board president. Or by the time they get to that point, I mean, the the screening committee down. has has the name, and they can make the decision. We, we could just bring that forward to the board, kind of, uh, and you don't even have to make it a. It doesn't have to be a. Uh, the board doesn't have to be put in an awkward qualitative decision. They can just be an up or down. We've got a name. Here's the name. Board says, "Yep, we like it based on that rationale." Or uh, we think we'd prefer that you go back and take a, another crack at it, kind of thing. Probably should rest. The decision should probably rest. With yeah. The board. That would be. So you could literally just eliminate the word pre pretty <coughs> surprising to say. Yeah. yeah. No. After it's gone through all that work, <laughs> we we try to work, and actually Amy'd be the right one to talk to on this one because she just led the last one. But we really try to um, help provide guidance in the committee meetings when they're going through this process. Um, I'll just give you, a, for instance, you know, you have 
uh, often have kids involved in picking mascots. They come up with some that was that silly was choices the sometimes. The gooey duck. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's is, Evergreen State College yep, in Washington. But it's a muscle, ducks. which is weird. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> a very interesting <laughs> way yep, of it is. That's their, that's their mask. Um, but uh, we try to provide guidance as they go through that. So hopefully, what we get as a name is something that everybody says, "Oh yeah, that sounds good." Mm -hmm. You know, you get a Christine Grant or you get a Liberty High School or something like that. And by the time it gets to you, it, it's kind of a pro forma thing because yeah, right. you right. looked at it. And there's spring. a board member on there, so if there's some enormous red flag, they can put that to rest. exception of six, I like the old. <coughs> yeah, I think if you just struck the word president at the end, you'd be all set there. Or yeah, recommends names to the board. Mm -hmm. So, looking to revert more back to the old mm -hmm. policy of what you're going to I like is. that, yeah. Yes. I do think one of the things that's nice <coughs> that, uh, carries through on both of them is the first one which is put out a solicitation mm -hmm. to the community yeah and, and right. ask for that input exactly it's obviously a lot I mean this was written back in 2005 but it's a lot easier for us now electronically to set up a portal where people can just go type right. in every name that they want to that gives the committee a really nice starting list uh, be able to and then they can use their filter to say is it one of these three categories yes no now they can narrow the list down but that way if you don't want to serve on the committee can't serve on the committee uh, committee's too big and there's no room for you, you still have the opportunity to get your feedback in there. But I like the mix, like JP said, of having the p different voices at the table. <coughs> so. Amy, any negatives to that from running that last committee? No, I, th I thought uh, providing <coughs> fair representation and clear representation of who was expected to be on the committee. I mm -hmm. think it provided a nice um, group of stakeholders to help with that. Yeah. So. When you pick a parent, it's just this one parent. So if you're naming three schools at once, that sounds that seems. We did parents from each of the each, catchment areas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the committee that worked on those four buildings, I think there were maybe 22 or 23. I just typed this up for the November 20th board meeting. This last because it was meeting. Alexander too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alexander Hoover, Grant, Liberty yeah. were the four names that got brought back. This last committee we put together 14 individuals, so we took. We invited the old committee members who oh. are still there okay. to meet with the new committee and talk about whether we should be transferring that name or if they felt that that name was attached to location, that kind of thing. So, okay. Kind of a hybrid. Yep. <coughs> All right, Jim, so you got going so back to the old one, striking president from number six. Yep. No. And really only be six steps because where it says school volunteer should really be one of the bulleted <coughs> members oh, yeah, right. underneath <laughs> the selection yes. screen oh, table. Right. So, so it is on yep. yep. So do you want us to bring it back to the next P and G committee or do you think it's ready to go right straight to the board after we make those changes? I think if you make those changes we okay. can take it to the board. Yeah. Okay. We'll send you a, a proof. I'll okay. take a look at it. If you got any questions, if it looks like we missed anything, you can let us know. Fraternization. Uh, Steve put some examples on the <coughs> agenda, but maybe you, know, you want to do the history of this or how we, this so is something that came from the board uh, or a board member that wanted us to discuss it. It's not a policy that we necessarily have. Uh, that's the next step of the next two. And you've got a bunch of examples out there, and uh, where we left it the last time the committee had met was that if there is a, a need, if there's, if this is something that uh, that the uh, district would like to see, that uh, we look at a blanket policy that applies to everybody, mm -hmm. board members, certified staff, support staff, volunteers, etc. Um, I know that there was concern. We talked about it at the ICEA leadership meeting. You know, what does this mean for, we've got a lot of, of married uh, partners uh, in the district. There, you know, are there are concerns about how this is um, enforced. And I think if you go through some of the policies in there, <coughs> the UI policy in particular, it's in there. Uh, I, you know, we had talked to them about how you write this. I would suggest if we decide that we want to move forward with that, we do work with our collective bargaining partners 
so that they've got a chance to review it as we go through it, make sure that there aren't any um, unforeseen roadblocks or things that we didn't understand or anticipate. Um, we do have access to UIHR, uh, and they're more than willing to help us out with that. So uh, if, if that is something that the board wants us to do, um, I'd go back to that last meeting and say, doing it from a global perspective would be the best way to do it, yeah. and then mm -hmm. doing it with our partners to make sure that we don't uh, we don't set something up that's either not enforceable or unfair, or there's uh, concerns about um, how it might be applied. Mm -hmm. I mean, I sit on the UI's committee for this, okay. and they, I mean, their policy works in all types of cases, mm -hmm. married couples, children, yep. exes. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Both always fine. Um, but <laughs> I, I, as a district, I would think we would want some type of protection because, I mean, it not only protects the employee, but it protects us as a district to say that we provided some guidance. Mm -hmm. So if something did occur, I don't know. Yeah, if you have that going on and somebody's in a relationship and it's somebody evaluating that person that right. relationship goes south or, and yeah. they get a bad evaluation yep. this that's what this is for or if they have control over working conditions yeah. and the assignments are yeah. unfavorable yeah I mean it's um, I mean the issue you know some of it is um, yeah I'm absolutely on board bring ICEA and that was my first yeah. thing like well and, and there's <laughs> a the way that the UI policy is written in particular covers things like nepotism yes. Yes. because it's right. talking about children and stepchildren mm -hmm. and how does that work and, and we've got yeah. um, yeah, we've too. got linear and we've got lateral relationships in the district and so uh, there's an opportunity to set some clarity where there really isn't any. Is right there now. anything in the code on this? Not really. Okay. No. Do we in the Iowa code? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As a district, I this sort of goes with it, but not really. Do we offer sexual harassment prevention training yes. as a district? Got to do it's it every year. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. And uh, the only thing that's in, in code from that standpoint would it be what's in the BOEE Code of Ethics. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there are some things in the Code of Ethics about that. We looked at that in one of the earlier meetings. About fraternization yeah. and nepotism? Okay. Yeah. And it's actually not nepotism. I think it's just a fraternization. Just fraternization. Issue. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I think like you suggested, if we go down this road, it has to be something broad. Yeah, and that's what the UI one is, and like yeah. you said, it's... And the UI one to me seems to allow, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like the North Carolina one, which was like, nope. I know. And I was like... <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and then the question is, how many people does that affect well, right that's, now? That's just it. Right. right. Yeah. And, uh, and I, obviously it's more than a few, so... Yeah. Because I'm sure even with the relationships that we have within the district, there's things in place where we don't have spouses supervising. Yeah, we, we other already spouses. do that yeah, just by so. uh, practical mm -hmm. application, but it's not uh, it's not codified. I mean, there's nothing that that technically there's nothing that would prevent an employee from hiring their kid, hiring their spouse, right. hiring their and I'm looking at all the different categories on here, their nephew, you know, mm -hmm. there's nothing that says that they couldn't do that and then directly supervise that person. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, we, it's gonna take, I mean, I think bring an ICA in and then um, maybe HR too, just to mm -hmm. try, because this is easily a policy where you can do more than you need to. Well, and that's and what our ICA yeah. leadership team said. Yeah. Their first question, and I understand where it came from, was is this a problem? And so that it, I am unaware of any problems that have cropped up in this area in my eight years here. I but don't know if it's time. a problem, but there are no known problems. Right, and but sometimes you want policies in place before right. there's a problem. Well, exactly. yeah, and I think we talked about that at the leadership meeting. Maybe better to write it when there isn't a sense of urgency. Right. Um, and to have the time to do it when we're not trying to apply it to a specific type mm -hmm. of case. So. I think the last time you guys talked about this too, we talked about conflict of interest and fraternization really kind of having one that would cover both those because if you look at a lot of those fraternization ones, they use that conflict of interest language. Yeah. And so I know that's your next agenda item, but there's probably a way to write something that covers both mm -hmm. of those and work with those teams to make sure we kind of cover both angles on that because a lot of the example policies are really the 
you know, use that conflict of interest language in there. I mean, with the conflict of interest, because, I mean, a university, again, is a good mm -hmm. yep. employer because they do have a separate policy for conflict of interest as it relates to relationships at work and conflict of interest that financial my thought, concern. yeah, financial, because sometimes um, with researchers, mm -hmm. there's oh. that opportunity where they can go out and be consultants and still receive pay. I mean, they have a policy written in a way where they still allow researchers to use their um, professional knowledge mm -hmm. and serve the greater good. And w I mean, I and we have to fill something out every year. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, talks even I do, and that. I don't. Yep. Nurses do. I mean, you know, I do as adjunct. I got to fill something yeah. out. Yeah, we got to say, oh, I'm not making yep. any money. I'm not, or or here's or what I did. It, right. Here's how I contributed. And then they my look at it expertise. more to make sure it's yeah. not something that goes against. Well, if it'd be all right with you, practice. I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to reach out through um, UI governance structure, get their policies, mm -hmm. bring them back take it to an ICEA leadership meeting, walk them through it and talk about what we would like to do and then start the process because I prefer not to start the process and then bring them in. I'd like to have them involved on the front end, especially because we've already had that conversation through the leadership group and they did express some concerns about it. So I'd, yeah. I'd like to have them in at the beginning and maybe even we do an administrative committee that includes them as part of that process. We might have to bring UI folks in to help us walk through it and understand it. We might need Jane in there, you know, from an HR standpoint, but um, because I would presume their policies would probably have to be modified to some degree to fit our context, but mm -hmm. at the same time, they probably provide a pretty good overall framework for us, but there might be some red flags in there, and I'd rather find out through that committee structure before mm -hmm. we get too we, far down yeah. the road. Absolutely. Okay. Because I don't yeah. think we That's have what you're going to yeah. say. Well, I was just going to say, do we want to, you know, just look at those two then, well, let's see what we come up with. Mm -hmm. So, and see well, what I mean, do you want him to start that? Box? No, I think, yes. yeah, they, they talk they about they them have both. to be yes. looked together. at together because so, yes. most organizations have them. Yes. Yes. Yeah, if you actually yeah, look, on yeah. <coughs> if you look on the second page where we pulled this from, their, their nepotism one is actually in their conflict of interest. So, yeah. if you look at the way they're nested. In their outline so form, I say, I think they're, just they're all they in. They're all in their the conflict of interest yeah. category. Mm -hmm. This was just the one that we pulled based okay. on conversation mm -hmm. at the board table before, because the conversation started with, "What about siblings, partners?" Yeah, but I think kids. Most organizations do have them yep. sort of nestled mm -hmm. in sure. there together. Yeah. So having that conversation yep. and that work start as right. side by side. Yep, we'll, we'll get the ball rolling. I think we have a leadership meeting next week. Is that, is that just ICA or is that the other groups too? Uh, our leadership uh, meeting right now is just with the ICA okay. uh, folks. Um, we'll, have, we'll know what happens with the other ones very shortly. Yeah, they've got to go through their organization. <laughs> so like we'll know who else we're working with yeah. probably by the end of the calendar year. Mm -hmm. so. so when would be a good time you think, to bring this back to? Um, <coughs> I would suggest that we probably would at least have some things to talk about at the next meeting. Okay. Um, right. Just because I think we have two leadership meetings before our next P and G meeting, so the three of us and Jane uh, sits in on those leadership meetings, okay. and then we have Mitch okay. and Brady there. So the six of us will probably have two opportunities to meet between now and then. So we'll probably have a better understanding of what looks like it fits where they would like to go. If they've got any concerns, we'll probably know those at that point in time. Do you, uh, we may invite them back to this meeting. So do principals ever sit in, or is that just your? Usually it's just the four of us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to get as many yeah. and heads in that. And you're right. See any we any we, we may sure want to expand the membership of that kind of subcommittee group because it may, um, we may want rights and responsibilities there, mm -hmm. as opposed to just the presidents. You yep. know? So there may be some other folks on. Yeah, that I think the more heads you get in yep. on that, because people are going to mm -hmm. think of, oh, what about this situation? Sure. And there's so many that were. Well, we may want Jane there. Jane, oh, Jane yeah. I think, has to be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, different Jane, Jane Ellerding. Oh, um, okay. Sorry, uh, she's our ISEA rep. So she, uh, right. she brings you to serve, sure. Global. She, yes. Yeah. Is she an older woman? I don't know. I'm an older guy, so she's about my age. Oh. <laughs> Very she's married to one of my faculty members. That's the only reason oh. why. I have not met her yet. But. Yeah, she might be. Yeah. Does she work at the hospital? Uh, you know what? I don't know what. 
Oh, if she's Uniserv, then she's that's her job. Yeah. Oh, she's she is. She's married to Michael Hare then. Okay. All right. She's the, the. You don't have to write that in a minute. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the tape. It's on yeah. the tape. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So F and okay. G pretty much get covered. Yep. Okay. We'll, we'll get to work on those, and like I said, we'll at least we'll have all the artifacts. We should be able to gather those from the university pretty quickly, so Great. we'll have those all ready to uh, post next time and get some feedback from uh, ICEA and or maybe ISCA as part of that. Uh, right. Uh, moves this right to agenda setting. Now, if you reload, wait a minute. What did I just do with that? Where did it go? I know I just loaded it. I can pull it up there too. Um, yeah, if you want to do that, I swear I just loaded it. Anyone? It's probably, well, it's probably in here somewhere. In it. Oh, that grid. I'm yeah, I just I just put it out there. <laughs> well, now I'm worried I attached it. Oh, to do it to something else? Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Oh yeah, I put it under the minutes. Sorry. Oh. So you got? It? Yeah. If you look under minutes until Kim gets it moved, <laughs> <laughs> the schedule's in the wrong place. <laughs> we'll get it moved to the right place okay. when somebody who works board docs better than I do has control under of it. Under minutes? Yeah, oh, I sorry. inadvertently put it on the wrong agenda item when I was uploading it. So. <laughs> Right, it's right there. It's that attachment. There we go. So, we should have math science done. Yep. All right. So, well, we want to have on that agenda uh, an update, or at least some more. Yep. Uh, talk about the fraternization <laughs> and conflict of interest. So that would be one topic. Which, honestly, depending on how far you, along you are, that may be mm -hmm. take up a chunk of time. Um, we but we can get through some of these other ones. Maybe Usually our legally mandated policies, we send those to Joe Holland uh, for a legal review to make sure that there's no updates to code or policy or other <coughs> things like that that need to be incorporated in it. And on this turnaround, usually I would say give it a meeting. So if we want to do 600, I wouldn't do it in the December meeting. I'd consider it in either the January or the February meeting. Okay. Right. Um, just with our posting requirements to get stuff up, if we go back and call them tomorrow and say, hey, we need these reviewed and we need them in two weeks. Well, I think we, we might be able to get through appendices now if we yeah. jump to that one instead. Yep. Um, appendix six is the complaint uh, policy, right? Appendix mm -hmm. two and three, I don't recall off the top of my head. Two's uh, evaluation, um, super evaluation. Three is the MIS schedule. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> uh, which it's MIS? Um, <laughs> it's a holdover. Um, it's the management <coughs> information system reporting schedule that they built when they moved to policy governance, and gosh, I don't know when, um, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, so it is the list of regularly scheduled reports that you get as a board. So it's. Um, uh, if you remember, um, Lori brought it up. Uh, no, who brought it up? Somebody brought it up. Was it Lori? Okay. Lori brought it up. You know, what, when, when do we get the APR report? When do we get yeah. the Budget. enrollment report? When do we get the quarterly financial reports? So there's a list of, and it's not by date. It's by the fourth Tuesday in November you get this, the second Tuesday in July you get this, the, third, the, the, the fourth Tuesday in October you get this. So it's all lined out so that when Kim builds the board docs agendas, she just goes to that in July and plugs all those reports in and then the team knows I got to give the annual grounds report here, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. And part of the idea was to make sure that they're laid out based on when do we get Iowa assessments. Have we gotten enough time from the end of the grounds re uh, season to give you the grounds report? Uh, have we gotten the information from the auditor so that we can give you the certified annual, annual financial report? So they're all kind of laid out like that. So it's an opportunity to kind of look at a year in a glance for us. And we can take a look at that. Um, in the past, boards have looked at it and said, I don't want that report anymore, but I do want this report. So you can look at all of them with that kind of eye too. Okay. So I would recommend that we do those appendix, those three, um, <coughs> at least hopefully try and get through appendix three so that we can do our review on time. Um, 
and then since we may not have a January meeting, those 600 policies, we could do those you know, put that on the agenda, the next February. agenda for mm -hmm. February, so you have time to do that. You know, one thing I'd, I'd like to talk about relatively soon is put um, updating um, policy on seclusion and restraint. Yeah, um, we, the seclusion that's on committee that's is meeting. yeah mm -hmm. meeting right. They met mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're actually meeting mm -hmm. right now. So, and I don't want to do um, anything major because I don't want to I don't mess up the work of that committee. It's just critical. Um, but I I think uh, and it's worth a discussion to just add in that we won't use those spaces for discipline. One paragraph that says it's only for safety and mm -hmm. we might want to wordsmith that a little bit. Yep. I don't want to say punishment. I don't want to use that word because that's, you know, when you get into applied behavioral analysis and you talk about behavior, that becomes a super subjective term and it's different for every individual. But discipline, I think, is pretty fair to say, you know, we're not going to use these um, for discipline purposes. Timing's perfect. So that committee's meeting tonight. We yeah. just met with our admin council this afternoon. Okay. Had a very long conversation with them about the appropriate use of uh, seclusion and restraint. Yeah. We had a, an interesting dialogue with them because I know you received a, a, a email from a community member who said, hey, I contacted these other districts and they don't use seclusion, which would actually be inaccurate because if I block the egress and I don't let you out of this room, I'm secluding you. So. In there, she said, well, the principal takes the kid to their office. Well, I'm pretty sure that kid's secluded in there under the, the, the state law. And so it, I think it gives us, what we did this afternoon was we had a clarifying conversation with the administrators about its use. Um, that would certainly help us from a policy standpoint in working with them so that they understand the parameters. Um, we also talked to them about, we've uh, removed seven of those temporary spaces those isolation boxes. Um, mm -hmm. We've removed seven of them already. We're going to remove the rest of the temporary ones between now and the start of the next school year. Great. So, so we're so going to send a message out to parents about that tonight. Great. So that's going to go out when we're done. And that's it. why I wanted to, because I, you know, I'm obviously caught in the middle of this, and and I work with, you know, so there's the community members who are who are really up in arms, who truly, and I've had tried to have conversations. Yep. Will don't understand. Won't listen to professionals, frankly, um, people who have helped them in the past. And so, we, but at the same, so, I, and I know that some of this is a lot, it's deep. I, I mean, I, Lisa and I had a great conversation about how deep and hard this is going to be for yes. our staff to understand this behavior and how it works. And, and, um, and I don't want to rush that. Right. It, we have to do it right, yeah. and and I know how hard it's going to be. But at the same time, I want the public to say we're moving, we're doing it, we're working. That's exactly the conversation we had today. Okay. <laughs> so you'll see it because you'll recognize it when you see the the email that comes out that's going to parents today. Essentially, the first couple sentences, the last couple sentences, are for the. 92% of our parents who don't have special ed kids, for the people in the community who don't have kids in our school district, who all they know is what they've read in the paper, seen on the social media, but there are some sentences that you will clearly recognize Great. because of your professional uh, role in the middle that talk about free and appropriate public education, least restrictive environment, yes. students with functional behavior plans, so that parents for whom that is an integral part of their child's education yeah. don't leave that that message with a oh they're they're throwing out the baby with the bathwater right kind good of thing. great so that's the way that yep. we wrote it hopefully you'll see that when we send Perfect. it out and that goes out tonight yeah excellent that's great great to hear because yeah and those those parents are the ones that are really freaking out they are who know what who know the behavior we're talking about right. and right. whose kids do it and, and who know and they're worried about being excluded from school mm -hmm. being excluded from school getting the cops called on them yeah. get, I mean yeah, yeah. so. Uh, Having policy to back up the work that the three of us are doing uh, would be immensely beneficial. Great. And to have it informed by that committee then I think gives it that level of legitimacy because we've got the university. Um, and maybe just uh, for a, an FYI, one of the other things, 
Um, I talked to Ruthina and Lori about an agenda setting today that you'll see on the um, agenda for uh, next Tuesday under the special ed update is when we went through the compliance process, the DE assigned us Beth Steenwick, uh -huh. and so she helped us through that compliance piece. We've now worked with the AEA, and we're going to bring her back in uh, for about 20 months to work us through the implementation, and the AEA is going to pay half the cost. Oh, great. So uh, she knows the compliance plan because she was there and helped make sure that, you know, helped us write it. Um, so, uh, and she'll be an outside eye giving us some of that objective feedback on it because I think, like Lisa said, it'll be tough for some areas of implementation, and it'll be good to have an outside expert to be able to say, you guys are on track or you're off track, move over here type of thing. So. Um, we're, I'm, I'm really uh, excited to maybe not be the right word, but I'm, I'm really I'm, I'm really motivated about the direction we're moving and the speed that we're starting to move. Great. And best support is really related back to I don't think this is the sitting board yet. That district developed service delivery plan that we have to have in place. Remember, it went back out for public com community, community comment. comment. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. Beth is going to help continue to support that work. Uh, the go with the goal, I believe, to have that new plan um, written and in place to, for board approval, I think, by June, and then keep her on next year to help with the implementation of that new plan. Great. So. Yeah. Great. So, right. Really excited about it. Yeah. So, so taking that action will yeah. definitely be a benefit. Yeah. So yeah, we'll do it on the next agenda. Just to and uh, well, you know, can we add that in? Or does that have to come from the board? Just. I'm trying to remember how, because it's not something we have now, right? Okay, so what he's asking is we had a, we had a big debate um, over the last couple of years about whether or not committees could add their own agenda items. I think wasn't the uh, decision in the end that they could? Because so. otherwise it comes yeah. from the whole board. Well, well like yeah. you have to make it from the table, the table to uh, say, uh, to say uh, I uh, want yeah, because let's go ahead and do that. Okay. okay. Otherwise because it could be like me and just like, here's what I want to cover. Okay. And we just so, right uh, okay. The good news is that because we have a board meeting next week, one of the items on the board meeting is update from the Policy and Governance Committee, and you can simply report out that you plan to address that. That's exactly yeah, what I was thinking meeting. in my yep. head anyway was yep. I this would happen after that update, yeah. and yeah. it would be good timing. Yep. To yeah. I mean, so we can put it on here, but I would just set the meeting. We'll just put it out there in a the meeting. Great. So I will another, try um, to remember that. I put out there to the meeting. <laughs> if you forget, I'll send you an email there, during the meeting. I could <laughs> find any type of policy um, in place on how <coughs> board members it should is. share information <coughs> with community members that we get electronically. I think in light of issues that sometimes are not all pieces of information for example that come from Matt or Amy or Steve to the board says confidential but I think JP raises that we all operate with the thought that this is meant for just board eyes and not for us to then share with someone else that could potentially I don't know post it on Facebook maybe it would is be nice to have some, I mean, I, I guess. I would like for us to have that mm -hmm. conversation, conversation or maybe a policy. You know what would be a good time to have that is usually when we do the, the legally mandated policies and Joe's done the review on it, we try to get him to come to that meeting. Okay. So if we're going to do the 600 policies in February, we could add that to the agenda. He will be here. He can prep for it ahead of time and then present while he's here. That'd be great. And one of the reasons that we've done that in the past is rather than us coming up with a whole bunch of questions and giving them to him. We give you the answers. You give back more questions. If he's just here at the table, usually it speeds up the dialogue. Great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It be, I mean, and part of this is just <coughs> social media exists, mm -hmm. and we forget it hasn't been here that long. What I'll probably do, if it's all right with you, is as we get into December, maybe November, never mind, it's November, um, I'll, I'll send you a quick... Uh, uh, email uh, to the three of you and just say if you have specific questions okay. send those to me then I'll compile them and send them to Joe so that he's got some place to start he usually has a wealth of other information that he has already worked on or through the Iowa School Attorneys Association and um, we can get that Maybe not at the next meeting, but just things that we like to use the term parking lot. 
to put out there that things that we need to think about. I can't think of anything yeah. now. That I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I second. Wait. Yeah, I'm here to chair. I know. I'm entertaining oh. a motion. <laughs> I, I move that we adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. 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 Aye.